Hi everybody, welcome back. In this video, I will be discussing art pieces which I think will best represent the different artistic movements in history from the prehistoric period to the contemporary times. So my friends, without further ado, let's begin. First up is the prehistoric period. And my friends, I think we can all agree that the best art piece to represent this era would have to be the Venus of Willendorf. My friends, the Venus of Willendorf is a very small sculpture, actually uh, around 4 inches tall. And my friends, it was excavated in Willendorf, Austria. And for me, the shape of the Venus of Willendorf would actually give us an idea on the values and desires of our ancestors. So hands down, I think, my friends, the Venus of Willendorf would best represent their prehistoric time. Next, we have the Classical Period. And my friends, I think choosing one art piece to represent this particular era would be more difficult compared to prehistoric times. Why? Because my friends, in this particular period, a lot of magnificent artworks were produced. Like for example, the Kuros, the Kityun Boy, the Venus de Milo, just to mention a few. But my friends, if you're going to ask me, I would have to say that the Kityun Boy would best represent this period. Why? Because my friends, I think during those times, most Greek artists are actually aiming to create a sculpture that would depict a realistic body of a human being. And the Kityun Boy would take that particular box. Number two, I think during those times, most Greek artists would choose young boys or adolescent boys as their subjects. So there you have it. So I think for this period, it would have to be the Cretian boy. Now how about the Byzantine tradition? Well my friends, once again, my answer is not debatable because I think everybody would agree that in representing this particular period, it would have to be the Hagia Sophia. Because my friends, this cathedral turned into a mosque, which is now a museum, is an actual evidence of the conglomeration of two cultures, the East and the West. And that is one major tenet of Byzantine art. So my friends, hands down, it would have to be the Hagia Sophia. Next is the Renaissance. And you know what? It was very difficult for me to choose just one. Most especially because I love all of the Renaissance masters like Sandro Botticelli, Michelangelo, Raphael, Leonardo. I love them all. Most especially their paintings like Sandro Botticelli's Birth of Venus, like Michelangelo's Sistine Chapel ceilings, like Leonardo's Mona Lisa, and Raphael's School of Athens. So it was really a challenge for me to just choose one. But my friends, I think one art piece that represents the Renaissance would have to be Michelangelo's David. Now why is that so? Because my friends, as we all know, in the Renaissance, their main aim is to revive what was lost in the medieval times. And what is that? The glory of Greek art. And my friends, I think the sculpture David is a manifestation of this aim to rediscover the genius of Greek artists. That's why my friends, I would have to say, it's David of Michelangelo. Next is the Baroque period. And my friends, if you were to ask me what are the words that would characterize this particular movement, I would have to say, number one, excessive. Number two, theatrical. Number three, flamboyant. Number four, awe-inspiring. And number five, dynamic. And my friends, among all the masters of this particular movement, who are number one, Rembrandt, Number two, Velasquez. Number three, Rubens. Number four, Vermeer. And number five, Caravaggio. My most favorite would have to be Caravaggio. And I think, my friends, his work, Bacchus, is a great representation of this period. Number one, it is theatrical. Number two, it is dramatic. And he also played with light, a technique called chiaroscuro, like juxtaposition of something bright and something dark. Next is the Neoclassical period. And my friends, this particular movement is characterized by the revival of the Greco-Roman antiquity. 
and in here most of the subjects of the paintings are characters from ancient Greece and Rome. And my friends, in terms of style, most painters in this particular era would use artificial light to emphasize the subject of their paintings. And I think, my friends, there is only one painter who was able to dominate the scene. And his name is Jax David. Yeah, Jax Louis David, actually. And I think his most important painting, which would exemplify all the tenets of neoclassical tradition, would have to be the death of Socrates. Now, that ends part number one. To my UST students, please continue watching because I'll be posting the activity at the end of the video. To the rest of you, thank you for watching and see you again soon.